Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to talk through some basic ideas around religious beliefs in ancient Greece. I'm going to be focusing on generalizations across most of Greece in this video and then in class we can have a look at some more specifically Athenian sources and festivals and so on. So the questions I need you to make notes on are number one, what religious beliefs did the Greeks have in general? Number two, what were the Greek gods like and how were they treated? And number three, who were the key gods and goddesses in the Greek pantheon? Remember that a pantheon is a group of gods in a polytheistic religion. So, firstly, talking about general beliefs that the ancient Greeks had about religion. So they believed that their lives were governed by some higher powers. On, t on the top, they have the three fates, who are often depicted as old women, and they had the role of determining how long your life would be and what your fate would be like. And the Greeks believed in the idea of fate and that what your, life, uh, what your fate was like would be determined from birth. And then below or next to them, you would have the gods. They were in control of natural events, like the weather, and they would also affect the journey that people took towards their fate. So they can slow things down, they can speed things up, they can detour it, but they can't actually change a person's fate. They don't have the power to um, drastically change someone's fate. In ancient Greece, religion was polytheistic, meaning that they believed in multiple different gods, and it was omnipresent meaning that it permeated everything. And so religion was an important part of, of pretty much everything they did. Um, travel, poetry and literature, warfare, sports, religion plays a key role, and as do the gods. And so we see that on a small scale within the home, that the Kyrios was responsible for placating the gods in order to keep his oikos safe and prosperous. And although all the Greeks had the same gods, they would have ones which they worshipped more than others, sort of particular favourites or patron deities. And so different families, different states would sort of show more worship to particular gods depending on what they needed. So for example, um, although the Athenians worshipped all the Olympian gods, Athena was their patron goddess and so they gave her special treatment and um, particularly more honour because she was their special goddess. In terms of what the Greeks believed their gods were like, the key difference between god and mortal human being is that the gods were immortal, they could not die, they did not bleed, if they were hurt, ichor came out of them. They're also anthropomorphic as these little statuettes show, which means they have the same shape as people. They don't have sort of animal or different characteristics. They look like people. Um, but although they're human in shape, they were thought to be more beautiful, more strong, more tall than mortal beings. And as well as being sort of bigger in a more physical sense, they're also bigger in an emotional sense. And so like humans they feel they fought they uh, they feel they fight they love but on a much bigger scale and the feelings of the gods are much bigger and have much greater consequences it was believed that they lived on mount olympus but they also had homes on earth so their temples and their holy places for example were like their holiday homes in the mortal realm and what really contrasts to, say, a, um, a Christian god is that they're often depicted as either uncaring or interfering. And think of them as like puppet masters. They get a bit bored. They want to just go and mess things around and sort of see what happens. So they can kind of control the action and, and see what happens. Um, but they don't necessarily have that sympathetic uh, depiction. So because of how the Greeks believed that their gods were, the nature of their gods, it shaped the treatment or the religious practices and how the Greeks worshipped their gods, which we'll look at a bit more closely in class. But in terms of generalizations, the Greeks showed awe and fear to, the, um, fear to, their, to their gods. They were scared of them. They looked up to them because 
they were bigger, better, stronger, more dangerous. And so the nature of the relationship between gods and men in ancient Greece was a reciprocal one. Men performed prayers and sacrifices, and then in theory, the gods would look after them. Um, they would sort of stop bad things from happening to them. They would give them good fortune. So it's a, a you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours sort of a situation. But because of their emotions, their feelings, their, their divine wrath, it was very important to the Greeks that they did not exhibit a characteristic um, called hubris, which means excessive pride, arrogance, the belief that you're better than the gods. And this is an important theme in a lot of literature. Um, and if you show hubris, if you think that you are better than your station as a mortal, it will lead to nemesis or divine retribution from the gods and you will suffer punishment as a result. And this is a really important theme in our plays, which we're going to be studying later on this year. But on the other hand, if things were going too well for you, if your life was working out really well, the Greeks also believed that that might invite jealousy on the part of the gods. Um, so they did have this belief that good fortune could also invite trouble from the gods, which I think is quite interesting. So finally, in terms of who the most important gods are, I've got here, you'll recognize this Olympian family tree from last year if you studied classics. And so these are the key gods and goddesses in the... Um, ancient Greek pantheon. The ones in bold are the ones who are traditionally the Olympians who live on Mount Olympus, but I'm going to talk through the most important ones for the purposes of our understanding. Um, and if you want to make these notes on page 96 of your workbook, I've got some diagrams there. So if we start off in the center, the most important of the gods is Zeus, the king of the gods, and he's also the god of the weather, which is why he's shown often with his thunderbolt. And his wife was also his sister, Hera, the goddess, uh, the, the queen of the gods, but she's also the goddess of marriage, um, childbirth, and woman. They have two important brothers, Poseidon, the god of the sea and earthquakes, and Hades, who is the king of the underworld. And so he's not counted as an Olympian because he doesn't live on Mount Olympus. He lives um, down below in the underworld. Aphrodite, how she links in depends on which myths you read. She is the goddess of love, beauty, sex, desire. So she's quite a powerful force. And there's some other important goddesses in this older generation. We've got Demeter, who's the goddess of the harvest and the seasons. And we've also got Hestia, who is the goddess of the home, the home fire, sort of domestic pursuits. And so she sometimes isn't counted as an Olympian because she's so nice and kind that she gave up her place so that the younger Olympians could have their space. Depending on which myths you read, Zeus and Hera don't have many children. Um, and the sort of myths all agree that their only son is Ares, the god of war. And we mean war in the sense of sort of battle lust and fighting as opposed to Athena. Some myths say that Hephaestus was the son of Zeus and Hera. Others that Hera sort of produced him by herself. He is the god of fire and metalwork. Zeus was very busy, had a lot of affairs with a range of women, both mortal and immortal. Um, and the most important of his children, we've got Athena, goddess of wisdom and therefore battle strategy, weaving, and she's the patron goddess of Athens, like I said. There are the twins, Artemis, the goddess of the moon and hunting, and Apollo, the god of the sun, music. Um, medicine, Hermes, the messenger god, and finally Dionysus, the god of wine, parties, good times, and often fertility as well. So make sure that you've got notes on the following. Number one, what religious beliefs did the Greeks have in general? Number two, what were the Greek gods like and how were they punished? 
And finally, number three, who were the key gods and goddesses in the Greek pantheon? Thanks, and we'll discuss this in class.